Welcome back, everybody, to Hearthstone Global Games and Group B, I want to say. Well rehearsed. Uh, might be Group D, but Denmark and Czech Republic went through yesterday, and now we're going to put through our first team of the day out of Chinese Taipei and Hong Kong. And it's a shaman-free zone, which is good in some ways, but not necessarily in others. Uh, there is an Azoth warrior lurking on either side. United, hoping they don't run into each other. Absolutely, but I think uh, for Hong Kong, there was a pretty well-played series in the previous matchup. Despite the fact that Rogue has been a bit of a weak spot for everyone who's brought it so far, I thought they did a fantastic job lining up against the uh, the Shaman because mm -hmm. uh, they saved a lot of their removal very, very well, went for a big swing turn and were able to come out the victors. But they do have now what I think we can agree is a bit of a miserable matchup up against the Druid. Yeah, we have seen the Rogue get it done, but not very often at all. Uh, you need to get some beefy stuff from cards like this Pharaoh Cat, I think, to really get in there. Or do the Edwin thing. Rogue can always do the Edwin thing. But other than that, it is a miserable matchup indeed. Let's go through to see the exact lineups. Hong Kong do have one questing adventurer as well, which... It's a fractional thing, but it does give them some sort of secondary out, and they haven't picked it up, so maybe maybe yeah, they can get some sort of questing going. Finding a class-specific uh, reborn minion there as well is fantastic for if they find the fence or the oh, vendetta for Papa. And so, until that point, like you said, it is definitely the questing adventurer on which their hopes lie. Which is sad. Your, your hopes lie in one card. It's one good card, but maybe they can get something going with the questing and the miscreant with Shadow Step. It seems a bit slow, though. And although yeah, you feel I mean, like you've got a lot of time against Druid, you don't have that much. They've got Myra's now as well. You know, this is starting to come together pretty well. Ooh, Ooh. Shadow Step and playing it out again, I would imagine, straight away. It does play around the Wrath. And Swipe is, of course, not available yet unless you were to see an Innovate on the same turn. So this is a pretty resilient play by Fung. And I think it's, like you said, going all in on the card that is most likely to win them the game. Yep, yeah, I like this plan a whole lot. Uh, very important to get it out of that range, of course. Of course, the Druid just needs to take one turn off the quest. We see it happen quite a lot against Rogue, where... They don't up the quest for one turn, just deal with a mess on the board and then go about their business. So getting out of Wrath range is a very big deal. And Finding the Wrath... they did. Yes, it's a very big deal because they would have very, very happily foregone a turn of quest completion in order to uh, ramp this bad boy up that little bit further. And I think you got to keep going. Don't touch that four mana thing. Just keep making this questing adventure ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I think I think I agree. I was wondering if it's Blink Fox to put the maximum amount of attack on board, but this feels that little bit stronger just because you get the double buff, which is effectively making up for the lack of attack anyway. Well, I've said it a lot during HCG, but it's now a good time to say it again, as it hasn't actually worked out that often. I do feel that largely the Questing Adventure build is better than the Shark Rogue for this tournament, uh, mainly because of the amount of Druids going on and the shark is fairly ineffectual against the druid it's just that bit too slow the druid heals itself and kills you and things which isn't much fun yeah i wonder if the tiebreaker which is uh something that i hadn't realized for myself but i heard a lot from the pro players who were bringing shark rogue to bucharest which is uh the mirror apparently shark rogue uh players like orange and fino were saying that the shark actually really helps specifically in the mirror because okay. that's the uh, the difference maker often. You're able to just get that little bit of extra value, bit of extra damage, bit of extra healing sometimes with the life drinker that pushes you over the edge. Yeah, that does make sense. And you're playing basically the same deck, so you're going to be able to hold on until you get to that value. And we have seen a decent amount of Rogue in this tournament, but I'm starting to think that other than the obvious Shaman, Druid seems to be by far the second most common deck. It's just all around pretty good against everything can even beat the Shaman decks sometimes. Yeah. Right. More specifically, less esoterically in this game, Fung is able to just start piling on the damage now. Loti, it's getting to the point where Loti is the only thing he's really afraid of now. 
Yeah, you want to get that question to A to take star four out of the equation and then shut your eyes and hope that Loki isn't a thing. Yeah, obviously the uh, Oasis Surger is still a possibility to take it out, which would, you know, definitely mean that Fung has automatically won the game. But I think even if that happens, he's still in a really nice spot. And there is the star fall. But it doesn't do a whole lot because the questing's on eight. In fact, can they even clear enough to just not die next turn? I guess they can, but only just. Only and just, Rogue, yeah. And they've got a lackey, which is usually damage. They've got a miscreant, which is probably more damage. Like, if they weren't going to die, I think they would definitely target the questing adventurer with the Starfall, even though it doesn't die. I guess with the Anubisat Sentinel, they're saying we have a chance that we're not dead with the way this shakes yeah. out. But I think we can quite clearly agree they are very, very, very likely to just straight up die here. Yep, not actually dead. Now, probably dead. I think they're probably dead here. I think, I think it's actually just certainly dead. Yeah. Damage, but okay. Oh, it's just the yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all fine. The pick up of the waggle pick made it reasonably straightforward. And one yep. zero to Hong Kong looking to make to that top eight. Yeah, I think whether they went with waggle pick, Miss Green there, it was lethal either way. So good job by uh, Hong Kong there. I think it was, again, just a very strong demonstration of how the rogue should be played. They realized right at the start. This is our win condition. We're going all in on this because if it doesn't work, the game is over anyway. Yes, they were conceding to Loti. Yes, they were maybe conceding to Oasis Surger on turn five, but it's an unfavored matchup. You got to take those risks. And therefore it was a very nicely played game by Hong Kong, bringing them up one game to zero and taking the rogue out of the equation, which honestly was again, looking to be their weak spot. Druid and the Chinese Taipei's lineup would have made for a very difficult interaction for the rogue. Uh-oh. So yesterday, Falcon and I cast a Druid versus Warrior match where mm -hmm. the Druid went infinite. And we were talking okay. about what happens if Druid plays Druid. Uh, let's just check the builds. Hong Kong are yeah, playing Banker <laughs> and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, and what are Chinese Taipei playing? If they're playing Banker as well, this might get very interesting or lack thereof. They're not playing Banker. They're playing Chef Nomi. Mm. This is Chinese Taipei. And... Not much else. So if it gets to the very late game, we get this weird situation where Chinese Taipei get one chance, well, probably two or three, to win with the Nomi. Otherwise, they get infinited. Yeah, it's a really weird balance here where, like you said, uh, Chinese Taipei are pretty undeniably the aggressors in this matchup. They have uh, Nomi. They also have a decent late game as well. But the things uh, where this gets really rough for Chinese Taipei, who I would say are definitely in on the back foot here, is the fact that they actually have a weaker mid game than Hong Kong because they only have Scenarius, whereas Hong Kong have Scenarius and King Faoris. And they ha also have a weaker hyper late game, as you said, because of the Baleful Bankers, uh, of which Hong Kong has one and Chinese Taipei does not. And so therefore, I think uh, Chinese Taipei have to get some real pep in their step Behold, and start winning the game the with uh, Chef Nomi at the absolute Ooh. finest level, but preferably a bit sooner before that. Yeah, a little bit weird that Chinese Taipei don't have Overflow in their Nomi deck. Those two cards kind of go together really well. Um, that would possibly cause me to think differently about the matchup, but they don't have that overflow in their Nomi deck. And that's just going to mean that the race to the end of the deck is going to be a fair one rather than an unfair one. And I don't think yep. they want a fair race right now. They want a fair race, not a fair race. <sighs> Look, it's early. I know it was bad. Okay. <laughs> Try, harder. Try harder as the day goes on. And if uh, Chinese Taipei did need to get off to a blisteringly fast start, they've done a reasonable job so far. Uh, but honestly, I'd say it's about even at the moment. They've both got a good amount of draw off of the Crystal Merchants. They both have the Nourish. They both have uh, a little bit of mid-game pressure as well. It's just perfectly yeah. even. Chinese Taipei do have the option to Oasis Surger into Hidden Oasis. And maybe try and get some pressure that way and delay their nourish, which is really counterintuitive. 
but would get the aggro marching on. Which is, I think, something just... I'd really like to see. I'm trying to, I was trying to think earlier who it was we saw in week one who is playing this matchup really aggressively. And I, uh... Oh. oh I my can't brain. actually remember. Yeah. It was really cool. They just... It was, um... I think it was France. Yeah, I think I'm not going to swear by that. I think it was France. Um, they just uh... launched all their minions out and just went nuts. Right. And it was just really cool to see because you don't see the matchup played that way. Belgium, there you go. It was mad. I knew uh, it was France or Belgium. There's always a bit of <laughs> Yes, you're right. I remember it, it was Belgium. Now. And uh, yeah, they were just playing super, super aggressively, throwing all their threats down in the mid game, and it worked out for them. It was a style of play we don't what? often see. Yeah, and both you and I were sort of looking at it develop, thinking more and more as it went on. First of all, it's like, oh, this is weird. Then it's like, oh, this is kind of cool. Then it's like, oh my God, this is brilliant. And got it all done really well. But this is the decision point, which is why they're spending so long. Um, I just like going aggressive here. But we can see the hands. We can see it might work. Well, I mean, what do you mean by Oasis Search? Because the quest isn't actually completed yet. So it would just be a three, a couple of three threes yeah. or a five five. Yeah. I mean, that's what I meant. It's just launch it out there. If you're going to go one more turn, you get stuck down the Novish route. But you want to be playing the the Hidden Oasis next turn in some ways. Yeah. Like they clearly I guess wanted to three do threes are just not so turn. good. Yeah. I mean, they were even considering, I think, uh, Defender plus Innovate just to get something on board and still draw a card off the one one. Um, but in the end, they just decided, all right, let's take it a little bit slower. You know, aggression doesn't necessarily mean throwing out all your stuff as quick as you can. It just means killing your opponent before their late game. Yeah, and I mean you don't you don't see that any better than in the current Evolved Shaman, mm -hmm. where you do nothing on a large percent, not just turns one and two either, but on a large percentage of your turns, waiting yeah. to do the crazy turn that just kills them on turn six, rather than building up. And yeah, you're right, waiting is interesting. Next turn will be interesting though, because it is that noish decision, and every instinct in every human druid's body is to play noish immediately. That's right. But a very, very interesting play was just made by Fung. It just played the bank. Yeah. That is I want to see how this develops. Fatigue. Gone. And against the Nomi deck as well. Against the Nomi deck, right. So the dynamic of the game just completely flipped on its head. Yeah, and I mean, they right. will know why they've done that, but it makes no sense to me at this moment. Yeah, let me have another look at the old Decaroo here. Oh, and uh, they no have the Noish. Big time. They're going for the minion plan. Okay, sure. I mean, they were overdrawing it. I think it's the right. Nourish, anyway. yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it's right here as well. Just makes me happy. Like, next turn. They can go Vate, Nourish, Double Anubisanth. Oh, next happy. turn they can go Oasis into Double Anubisanth and just say, here's a load of stuff as that's well. That's a good point, actually, yeah. It's, it's, that's Maybe a pretty that's scary sword. Sure. And they've got well, Oasis very, Surge very... back up as well. So they can actually play Triple Anubisanth, kind of. Yeah. If they want to waste their Surge, it depends how much they want to use their Floop for Nomi at the end. But it must be very tempting just to go all in now. And is that all you've got? That's that's kind of the the green light to go, look, just go for it. They're wrapping your 5-3 and they're kind of out of stuff. They're not out of stuff, but it feels uh, that way. You've got to be careful in this matchup, though. Like, throwing out all your stuff really aggressively, allowing them to use their removal effectively is a, a dangerous road to travel mm. down for sure. This is true. But, I mean, it maybe, depends how they maybe you're playing. Might depend how they feel about the banker being played out as well right. that changes so much they have to double check sure. as we do. <laughs> make sure there isn't a second banker or something i'm sure there's not I mean, but there isn't you start questioning your, there, yeah there isn't when you start questioning yourself when weird stuff happens yeah. so they're playing the sensible line which i can get yeah, behind it's I'd, still I'd a huge amount of amazing. temper right they can get a four mana oasis surge down and two anubisath defenders if they so desired, allows them to push a huge amount of damage face. But 
problem is, it does leave them very, very weak to double Starfall, I suppose. Or even just one mm. Starfall. Actually, no. Because their two Oasis Surges would have six health. So it would have to be double Starfall, Loti Starfall, or Starfall Swipe for any impactful difference to be made here for, for Hong Kong. Yeah, and the big decision is what to do with your flute. Do you save it I mean, for Nomi I at the end? Do you think I can see there? Or do you just wedge it all out there now and try and get I them really done? want to see it now. I agree. Yeah. But they also agree that you've got to think about it. Looking at that, doing the little dance, he goes backwards and forwards. Like Narina's game plan, it should be to turbo out minions because he has huge amounts of card draw still ready to go. He missed playing the second Anubisath defender there, which is a pretty big mistake in my opinion you know that means that all of a sudden uh you're not threatening scenarius as being as scary you have less room in your hand for um the nourish and i'm sure it uh, like i'm pretty sure it probably was a mistake and they wanted to get it down it was just rope burning i don't know way. actually he he did hover over it and seemed to pull it back maybe he feels Fair this enough. is enough and he's still got enough for a second board this way because it felt like a mistake to me but Maybe they feel that if they can't deal with this board, then they can't and we kill them. And if they can deal with this board, they can deal with another five health minion as well. We like double staff or innovate or something crazy like that. I guess so. But honestly, I feel like you're already approaching the state here as an arena where if they clear this board, you're starting to be in trouble. And yeah. uh, even if they do clear the board, having an extra 3-5 probably won't make it oh, because you need to start turboing towards no means. Yeah, I'm on board with the Dara. It's happening way too often. I need to stop being on board with Darek's <laughs> plans. My whole point in life is to make Darek's plans bad. Even if they're good. Like a scooby Gonna be a villain. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have gotten away with it as well if it wasn't for that pesky <laughs> ultimate infestation. <laughs> what to do? Gonna be interesting to see which both sides get out of their Zephyrus or Zephyrite in this particular game as well. That could be a big difference now that things are levelling up. Also notice that Hong Kong are trying to make their King Ferris as good as possible. They have tended yep. to hang on to their removal spells and use their minions. That's a great point. So on this turn, Loti, Nourish, Innovate, Starfall, I don't think is playable all on one turn. It's one mana off. So instead they're having to line up for something different here. I really hope we see the Loti left stealth though. I think you can get a lot more value out of it yeah. stealth than attacking here. Yeah, you see that a lot in the Druid Mirror. Just leaving it stealth, get that spell damage and also stop them playing yep. something monstrous. I'm alright with this. Halfway through the decks already. Well, far more than halfway, actually, but yeah. Yeah. Scenarius Vate Wrath is one attack off from actually clearing the uh, 3-5. Hmm. So that's probably not the plan on this turn. Instead, hey, let's just go for it. Nourish to turbo through the deck yet <laughs> further. Trying to find that... Uh... Uh, that King Fioris, I would imagine, to go for yeah. the biggest tempo swing possible. It's such a weird card in the deck you can see why some people leave it out where if you get to play it in this sort of situation it's amazing but the number of times it gets stuck in your hand and then you've got this elite clutter yeah is also quite high so yeah definitely want to just get it done with it doesn't even have to be huge just a couple of spells even if it's a five and a one or something like that it's plenty yep. And it does feel at times like it's just a hangover from the old deck that hasn't quite gone away yet. A couple of copies, and I ever... think Fairies might be done. Yeah, I wonder if this is ever double Loti, and you just leave them both stealth. Like, that is a huge amount of spell damage, which is Ooh. pretty impactful. That's that's a really tasty thought. Yeah. So just going the biggest that... available thing, which also makes sense. But yeah, I mean, you know, this this is a fine play, of course. And with only two low... Starfalls in hand, maybe this is better. Right, Zephyrus is active, but does he do anything? I mean, obviously, he does lots of things. He gives you perfect cards. 
Oh, what is the best card though? Is it Master Spell, MCT, Frost Nova? It depends what their plan is because, what? I mean, the best card yeah. is to keep it in your hand until you get to release it for a bit, but... Right, sure. Um, the best card, you, you could go for a late game, just remove everything a couple of times. Mm. Twisting the other maybe twice in a row, that's no me done with. And win with the fail is extra value in your deck. They set up a deadly shot to take out. Uh, yeah, I guess you're getting a little bit complicated there. This seems like a perfectly good way to ramp up the pressure. Yeah, Hong Kong's issue in this whole game really revolves around what to do when Nomi happens. Yeah. Because stopping Nomi from happening seems complicated. Okay, powerful turn starting to become available for Narina now, as well as Fung. This could be Kun the Forgotten King and then Double, double Star Fall, It's I guess. so tempting. I don't, I'm the same as you, where your brain rebels Ugh. if you use your removal in that way, especially with King yeah. Priori still to come. But also Hong Kong are really forcing the issue, so if you stop them forcing the issue, you might be in a much better spot. Like, I, I know it's a little bit results-oriented here, and he wouldn't have had the scenarios on the previous turn if he had the Worthy Expedition, but Loti, double Loti Starfall here would be so filthy to be able right. to clear up the board, get two Lotis on the board, and four health is like a relatively common breakpoint that you have to contend with against scenarios. Yeah, I think it would have been very interesting and would have worked, let's say four is a number that matters. But now they've they've got seven cards to draw through, and this is if this board gets removed, it's danger time for Chinese Taipei. Yep. They are the ones pushing the issue. They do have forty-four effective health, which is a huge number, even for Druid. Like to, to chew through, so they should get to the end of their deck. But now yeah, we're I mean, full on in this weird tempo six drop war. Yeah, it's a weird dynamic that's been struck right where. They both kind of have a pseudo chef Nomi because Fung basically, well, actually, I take that back. King Feoris was close to a Nomi before both of these Starfalls were played. Now, all of a sudden, it's significantly weaker than a chef Nomi were it to come down. Uh, so, I guess Narina does have the advantage as soon as he's, as he's able to get through to fatigue. That may just take a little while to do so. This is not a fun Hearthstone turn. Behold, like, jewels of the sun. This is just not where you want to enjoy your life, but they are fitting out their hand to the cards they want, which Ooh. is something you do have to do about now. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting though. That banker going early is still baffling me St very slightly. Well, more than right. very slightly, quite a lot. Yeah. I mean, the reasoning was very clearly to clear up space in hand when you have a nourish and a bunch of draw and you need to tempo it out just to make room in hand. But the, whether that's worth it to not have the infinite fatigue capabilities later on is something I definitely question. Because Druids rarely kill each other until the end of the game, until the end of while. the deck. So and even clearly... if you have to fiddle around... Right, I mean, maybe their assumption is that Nomi is so powerful that they have to win before they get to fatigue anyway. Right. I would call that an erroneous assumption because the power of Zephyrus with Elise later on is very, very powerful, especially when you have a stronger mid game anyway with the Feoris and Scenarius. Yeah, if Chinese Taipei had an overflow in their deck, I would be saying, okay, throw the banquet away, you never get to use it. Right, okay, yeah. But they don't. Interesting on such small things, decisions can swing as well. We talk about one card in the entire deck. We really only took out one card in Feoris as well. True. It makes all the difference in the world, though. Yeah, when, when you see every card, it's a bit different in some decks. Like when you're talking about Token Shaman, it's a bit different because your decisions only matter up till turn seven. But you see every card in these decks, the actual composition will matter, just like in Battlegrounds.
Decision time because this is the hand they're going to be stuck with for the rest of the game with Elise if they throw out scenarios now it just gets eaten up you don't get to use it again which is a big deal you see they're not keen but looking at the rest of their hand what else can they do And, as always, with Druid, Faoris turns up when you just can't get any value out of him. I'm just in favour of throwing him out there and getting something off him, rather than trying to be greedy. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. I I'm wondering if they can, like, manipulate it so Zephyrus, like, offers them Twisting Nether or something like that, and they don't play it. Um, right. Because then they could just get a bigger minion off of King Faoris. It's probably a little bit, uh... No, that's not too ridiculous. Uh, overthinking it. I mean, when the match is this tight, overthinking it and finding a way is, is not the worst yeah. idea. So at least definitely has to be at least considered here, right? Yes. Like, at least Crystal Maiden clears up a space in hand. It copies you, you know, some pretty good cards. Yeah. Looks like they're going to... Behold, the jewels of the just dump the, yeah, they've got to dump the merchant in that order. I think that's fair. Because you don't want to be drawing the cards late game in two fatigue. Well, uh, okay, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, you'd rather because not they have dump the merchant. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I like this order better too. I was a bit confused because it is literally just they don't have a crystal maiden in hand, a crystal merchant, but they don't want one. So yeah, I agree. Way too many auto battles, Derek. <laughs> Yeah, well, no. much easier turn here for Chinese Taipei. Just a case of how to maximise it. We can all see pretty good clears available. Swipe and Wrath being the main protagonists in that. Mm -hmm. Drawing the card with Wrath does seem like a desirable thing to do right now. Yeah, I, I guess Zephyrus is too valuable. I was looking at if you could go for like uh, swipe Zephyrus Shadow Flame or something like that to be able to clear off the board, or even just like Zephyrus uh, Blizzard or something like that. But yeah, I agree. This, uh, you'd rather be copying it and getting more value out of it later on. This is the hand they want, so they don't care about the rest of their deck. If something burns, it burns. Some people just want to see their deck burn. So wait, swipe wouldn't have been copied right because it was on the right hand side. So this means they'd rather have a ferocious howl than a card in their deck. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I'd say that's a good. Uh, <laughs> we, we saw warrior end up with seven ferocious howls in their deck at one point. Yeah. Because of all this nonsense. <laughs> well, well done, Ferris. That's the most. I mean, they've waited until after all the AOE's gone, to be fair, but... Yeah, that's a uh, reasonable little board. Losing swipe is pretty bad, actually. I think you'd much rather have that. So at any point, both teams have available to them the Zephyrus into Twisting Nether, but then you've lost all of your Zephyrus and the other team hasn't had to do it. Right. So here there's like a pretty big tempo swing of Zephyrus Shadow Flame on either... I, I mean, I guess on the 5-3 because it's smaller. Uh, and then you take out the zero five 5 death rattle left over, which is pretty good, you know. You then have 4 mana left over, uh, which you can't do all too much with, so that doesn't feel great, I suppose. I mean, you can just wrath to draw a card. What to do? Yeah. Yes, play a 6-6 six, six Nomi, that's the solution to all your troubles. <laughs> Put the chef down and step away from the dinner. Not what you want right now. Yeah? We're not in trouble, you're in trouble. Go. Uh, okay, okay, sure. This does leave a pretty mediocre selection of minions on board. 
but it does give you this thing next turn where you've got your your reasonable stuff as Chinese Taipei can trade into most of the reasonable stuff from Hong Kong, and then you can dump yeah. the Nomi onto the board, force out a Twisting Nether, and then your Zephyrus, if you don't have to Nether yourself, can be spent on things like Tyrion, for instance, depending exactly mm -hmm. how things go. Well, this is looking like a very close game as it currently stands. There are two Nomis at the moment for Narina, but there are two Zephries for Thung in order to go Twisting Nether, Twisting Nether, to take both of those out. So I guess the difference maker might be that Narina has more Zephyrses to be able to yeah, generate available. threats, as you said, like Tyrion. Hmm. Yeah, available Zephyrses. Mm -hmm. And actually just looking at the hands, they seem to have more available of kind of everything. We've got an Oasis Surger knocking about, it be irritating. It's not going to do it, Zephyrus, That's, you're just not good enough. And this is how I'd like Druid to be, is really lots going on, but not actually infinite. Sure. A resource war where nobody runs out of resources is not particularly fun. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Infinity either. I agree. But a resource war that takes ages, but at least at the end of it you see who used their resources better. That I can get behind a lot more. Ooh. Couldn't have got a king. That sounds good to me. Mm, he sounds good to me too. So I wonder if, if this is not a Chef Nomi turn, because obviously if you're just going for a big Nomi, you're afraid of bloodlust off of the Zephyrus. Just go for the mark though. Maybe valuing the uh, immediate yeah, so stuff. hesitant. Like, so hesitant to use Zephyrus. Uh, or is it, it, uh, I don't they, know, it could have just been bloodlust. Zephyrus Shadow Flame. Yeah, they're setting up Bloodlust. So they're going to try and make um, Hong Kong clear these not-so-exciting boards. And that yeah. frees up their notes by threatening Bloodlust. I think that's the plan. Sure, 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 sure. Well, we'll have to see if it works. As both players enter Fatigue now, this is going to be a very close one indeed. Because, I mean, Fung does not have a lot of health to work with. He can't keep drawing through his deck as well with the Ferocious Howls. Because, again, in Fatigue. Yeah, and this isn't going to take that long from this point, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I've changed my mind about nine times who's going to win it, but... Yeah, that Ferocious Howl plan was a bit weird. It's lit I feel like it's literally going to come down to the fact that one side will have a minion and the other side won't. And then it's all about whether the extra 20 health or whatever that Chinese Taipei have accumulated matters. Yeah. 18, I think. And now they're threatening bloodlusts. And, I don't know, this is just the, the, the problem I have with Narita's gameplay is, yes, he saves two Zephyrses to go with the Chef Nomi, but... Does he need both of them? Because now, if he'd gone for the play of just shadow flaming away the board, mm -hmm. he would have been met with less of a response from Fung, and therefore, he would have been allowed to play his chef Nomi. Whereas here, if he goes for Nomi, he, he takes a lot of damage, right? He can just, like, Fung can just go for Blizzard, freeze the board, and then what does Narina do? I think if it goes right, you lose to a double Savage Raw here. I might have added it up wrong. Because I might the Zephyrus it. offer the first one. I don't know. Yeah, but like he's just forcing it to offer the twist, uh, Frost Nova here. Yeah. And that's just game. And they're board Marina can't even play the Zephyrus. Nicely done at the end there by Hong Kong, but yeah, getting board locked and should have expected this. You know they've got two Zephyrus. Yeah. And now they'll take Savage. Oh, They'll trade in a 1-1 one, one and take Savage Raw win. If it's not just lethal, I can't be bothered to counter that, so I'd get a Savage Raw to be sure. And do you know what? 
the, the speed with which Fung made that final turn of just yes. instantly uh, Oasis Surger, Zephyrus, Frost Nova, that says a lot to me about that game. I wonder if the speed with which he played that explains his uh, willingness to play the banker right at the start of the game. Because if he knows this matchup that well, he will know mm -hmm. eventually they're going to play Chef Nomi. Eventually, we're going to have Zephyrus. We can just freeze the board, push everything face, and lock them out of the game. Yeah, I, I think he knew it. I think you're right. I think he did know and, it. I think, I think it, his the knowledge Chinese Taipei extends... didn't know it. What? I, I agree. I agree. It feels like Fung just had a better understanding of the matchup here and was able to throw away one of the most valuable cards in the matchup because I think he anticipated this exact scenario. Yeah, he even looks a little stunned right now. He's like, oh, they just didn't know this. Like, those, He won't have just been playing for this. He'll have been playing against the counter to this, whatever that may be. I'm not going to work it out yeah. in 30 seconds while casting, but there'll be a counter to this that Fung knows. And they've just died to the first level play, basically. <laughs> as far as Fung's gone to takes the heal while he can but I mean I think we can quite clearly see you trade in away one piece of rubbish freeze the rest and you're happy as Larry yeah Funk said like three or four words there which would have or been just get lethal there you go whatever say yeah whatever says it will give bloodlust right was basically the very quick check <laughs> that he made there I don't have to manipulate the bloodlust the lethal you do not and it is 2-0 to Hong Kong what looked like a beautifully played game as it as we saw the end and then work backwards basically yeah i liked a lot of what i saw there from hong kong i feel like they knew that that ending was coming for quite a while and showed great understanding in that matchup i think it again demonstrates that chef nomi is just not the build of druid to go for at the moment whether you're going for the uh, like classic banker druid that Hong Kong uh, went for, whether you go for the combo druid that uh, Denmark went for, or whether you go for Sathravar druid, like we saw uh, from Germany and uh, I believe from Mexico as well at one point. Any of those strategies that allow you some kind of infinite uh, fatigue scenario or an OTK win condition, I think is significantly more powerful than the Chef Nomi variant. Yeah, I would add the one proviso that the Nomi with Overflow at least has a more coherent game plan. Sure. Like yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna go Nomi, don't hold back. Just do it. Draw all your cards, play Nomi, beat Rogue. But... Yeah, I, I think even then I would argue that going for Denmark style of deck where they do have the overflow, but they also have the OTK combo is probably even more powerful then. But I agree, I... if you build your Nomi deck in a, a better way, you're in with a good shot. So 2-0 to Hong Kong. They are one game away from making it to the top eight. Will they get there? We'll find out after this break.
Welcome back to the Group B winners match between Chinese Taipei and Hong Kong. Hong Kong one win from joining Denmark and the Czech Republic next, well, in three weeks' time in the top eight, where we will have brand new meta, shiny dragons for everybody. Draw dragons, play dragons. It's going to be great. But for now, can they get the better of this meta to get themselves into that spot? Looking good at 2-0 ahead. Oh, i tell you one thing, Neil. I cannot bloomin' wait for uh, the scent of dragons to come in. It's going to be very exciting times. Some of the cards they've announced have just been absolutely cuckoo bananas. Yes, one or two. I'm a little bit scared of... Um, I can't remember the exact name, but Queen Alexstrasza, basically. Oh, yeah. Where you get two dragons for free, and if one of them is Queen Alexstrasza, all craziness breaks loose because you just keep <laughs> doing that. Yes. I'm sure the name is far more complicated and intricate than that, but I always make up my own names for cards. I feel it's the way forward. Some, I mean, someone I in the design it's... team spends hours making these names up, and I just ruin it and make my own. It's literally just Dragon Queen Alex Charles, so it's about as uh, exciting as yours was. Okay. Slightly better. <laughs> nice. Queen, good why, how do I not remember it's a Dragon Queen when it's a dragon? Anyway, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's usually just uh, taken for granted. But here, Shaxi is doing all the things you want to do against Warrior in this starting hand. He's drawing cards with Cleric, lots of them for that matter. And he also has a nice big high health minion. A seven health Blade Master is pretty difficult to deal with, honestly, unless uh, you're able to get a mummy plus something else able to come down on the same turn, which as it currently stands, looks possible for sure for Shaxi. Um, or for Kin, sorry, to be able to kill it off with the mummy, but not guaranteed quite yet. Yeah, and that's from what they can see. From what we can see, yeah. they've got to do it all again. <laughs> because oh, Cyberpunk's yeah. Cleric, they're all sitting there chilling, waiting to go. The Pompinator, I believe, was the name somebody used yesterday. Someone. Someone stupid. And it wasn't you. No, definitely not. I'd never say something so juvenile. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Garrett the adult. Coming to you, 2020. Exactly. Here's a lot of cards. They could have delayed this. This was a decision to try and squeak through twice, but they're choosing to just go nuts once instead, which will work quite well. I, I think this is fine, because what choice does Kin have now? It's a turn before Brawl, so that's not a possibility. Warpath is not especially powerful. Like, maybe the best thing they can do is actually Warpath and just go double trade into the Cleric and then double Warpath. But Restless Mummy can't even take out both Clerics here, so they're almost guaranteed to be able to draw another card next turn, if they even need to. Yeah, or just kill your opponent, which as we can see, it didn't go that route, but from where Kin is sat, they're taking 28 from that Blade Master next turn, one way or another. Mm -hmm. That's just because how it always goes. Gold medalist, Kin 0531. Be another gold medal handed out fairly soon. I think it is the Southeast Asia Games coming up next week. Hearthstone is oh, on, yeah, right, you are. one of the esports teams in that. One of the esports, yeah, the part of the esports section of the Southeast Asia Games. No, it's not. No, Hudson no, is not a yes. country. <laughs> no, can hold me. So, yeah, dealing with what they can, and like you said, it's not enough in some worlds. Making the correct decision, though, to say, okay, if you've got it, you've got it, we'll leave the Blade Master up. Sometimes we just get overwhelmed by 28 points of ouch. Yeah, the only real thing that Shaxi is missing here is actual health buffs. The best he's got is like power, shield, extra arms. It's all a little bit uh, mediocre, a bit lackluster as it currently stands. Because at this point, when you've drawn a whole bunch of cards right at the start of the game, the way you want to capitalize on that is uh, Divine Spirit. Divine Spirit, smack him in the face as hard as you can. Yeah, they just haven't got any of that stuff. It's, I mean, it's turn four, Darak. We just asked for 15 cards. Yep. Because that's what Priest expects. Back in my day, Priest was happy to just get a couple of cards. Now it wants its whole deck. Quickly. I've got more left in me. It's 
strong play that can still be made though with uh, a Nefeset Ritualist if the card draw wanted, uh, if Shaxi wanted to keep up with the card draw. I hear it some... holds back for the moment. The closers. One thing I would say is I really like not trading with the um, Blade Master there. I think that would have been a huge mistake because that would have set up yep. perfectly for Plague of Wrath. Whereas now with the taunt in the way, Kin is unable to get a good clear with Plague of Wrath. So Brawl, even if he had both options, Brawl is kind of forced what? here over no. the Plague of Wrath. That's a really good point. Especially as it's so tempting because as Priest, you want all of your things injured most of the time. Right, exactly. So it's, it's, it's instinctive to just injure everything and get Plague of Wrath. Uh, you only do it once, but yeah. What now? Quite liking this Shaxi and Narina team actually. They seem to have a really good balance of paying close attention when they need to and having a bit of a laugh when they don't. And Hong Kong have, have seem to have the same sort of setup. <laughs> I mean, Kin is just overjoyed that they just got defeated on a brawl horribly. Yeah, you kind of got to laugh it off sometimes as they are pretty close to just losing now. I'm looking at the way this shapes out. There is uh, no health buff that can come down on the same turn other than divine spirit uh so 18 damage Ooh. maximum here which is yeah. scary but i would have to imagine shaxi wants to go down a uh well actually no i take that back i was gonna Ooh. say shaxi will want to go down a different route and not create an 18 18 minion maybe he just does just, yeah. yeah you just do your opponents just panic brawled you and lost right yeah because of the panic brawl i think you just do it and say okay i don't think you i don't think you have this Always easier as cast division people to do that and say that. Absolutely. But I do think that's a fairly strong read. They just couldn't deal with your stuff. Yeah. Just finishing off the, the morale point there, I think most of the teams that got to this top 16 were the ones that stayed chilled all the way through and didn't panic when they were losing. Just yeah. like treated it for the fun that it is. I agree completely. It's... Uh... Especially when it comes down to these kind of plays where, you know, the rope's burning right at the end. And whenever you're playing with someone else, if you're not on the mouse, the thing you always say is, just play it, just play it, just do whatever you want. Just mm -hmm. make the play, I trust you. Which is stressful if you don't, if you're not like comfortable with the other person, if you're not good friends with the other person. When they do that, that can really put you on edge. See what they pick up here. Uh, that's lethal. Ah, so I can go. continue yeah. this train of thought now. Uh, Fury Hunter was saying that that's what him and Freddy tidied up between weeks two and three. Is okay. they're now just saying, just whoever's driving, we trust each other, just do it. I'm glad to hear that, because that's kind of what I was hypothesizing. Yeah, exactly. I think we were pleased on that one. Whereas week one, he didn't say the opposite. In week one, they were overthinking everything as a team. Which when yep. you've got two uh, geniuses isn't the word I'm looking for, but two analysts such as Fury and Freddy on the team. I can see how they can just sit and talk for hours about a turn and forget the rope exists. This week, they just kept it brief, let the driver drive and won their group with ease. But back to this, that's one back for Chinese Taipei, pushing us ever closer to everybody's favorite match in all of our <laughs> And to be fair, we have many. I must if the Druid wins this, wild. we're gonna get one. Yeah, to be fair to them, they queued up the matchup that is least likely to win, first of all, in the Priest. So they're clearly trying to get the uh, uh, miserable matchup over with first of all and they did end up taking the win so congratulations to them now they are left with the druid up against the warrior which again taking a look at the deck lists which makes all the difference in the world in these slow matchups this is no fatigue druid this has no banker and no sath rovar which has come in as a uh, kind of a preview of descent of dragons i believe everyone's actually able to get that card for free unless i'm mistaken if you uh, log into Hearthstone do. at the moment. Yeah, so I mean, well, you should be logging into Hearthstone anyway. What are you doing if you're not playing Hearthstone? That's what I want to know. But they're it does concentrating mean... Concentrating on us, Derek, and our amazing insights into the Hearthstone Global Games. That's what they're doing. Excellent point. Uh, does, however, mean, though, that this is the Nomi Druid that we saw look pretty lackluster last game, and it's going to have to take a win against the Warrior. I'd say it's him with a decent shot of doing so. You know, we're looking at a double brawl, double Plague of Wrath Warrior, so there is a fair amount of removal, to be fair. But if you play your cards right, uh, literally, as the Druid, you do have, I think, usually enough threats to outlast the removal. Yeah, I agree entirely. That being said, we saw that Hong Kong definitely had a better grip on the Druid Mirror, 
Yep. And there is a lot of interplay happens at the end with this Hakar versus full hand versus Elise versus shutting off Highlander mode stuff. And so I want to see when Hong Kong choose to do the Hakar things. That's right. Like the Druid is still favoured because the Warrior has to do the Hakar with roughly four cards left in the deck is sort of a sweet spot. To, to stop the druid from having a full hand and just overdrawing the bloods. You kind of have to do it before they get to that point. Give them yourself one chance to hit it. But if you hit it, yeah. the two bloods go in the deck, everything switches off and the druid powerless. It's a good point actually to bring up that it does feel like, uh, you know, obviously there's uh, Fung as well on Team Hong Kong, but the real star player that i am got my eyes on is undeniably Kin. Uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Grandmasters on the horizon for him next season after getting through to the finals in Masters of the Forest, only losing to Eddie just at the end. I think uh, he's showing consistent, very, very high level knowledge of these matchups um, at a time when, you know, honestly, a lot of players that I also respect very highly are not showing such in-depth uh, knowledge of a lot of the matchups. This has been... A uh, bit of a dry patch, you know, in terms of competitive Hearthstone. Grandmasters has ended. There haven't been any Masters tours for a while. We're all waiting for the new expansion. And honestly, a lot of players are spending this time uh, recuperating. They're not grinding especially hard. They're playing Battlegrounds instead, saving their energy for when it comes around to Grandmasters next year or Arlington as the next Masters tour event. Uh, but Kin here, it does feel like uh, whether or not he's been playing a lot of ladder at the moment, I'm not sure. It feels like he knows his stuff very well. Yeah, and there's a lot to be said for just saving your energy. Uh, I think somebody yeah. like Kin might be the other way. Uh, I'm the new Grandmaster. I mean, I've always talked about Kin very highly. I, I had the stats last year, and he was just one of the absolute best players in 2017 or 2018, whatever last year was. I don't know anymore. 2018. Um, plus he threw in that gold medal, of course, as well. But... <laughs> I, I feel that when you're the new guy, no matter how highly others have spoken about you, you want to prove it, even if it is only in the Derek air quotes. You're know, doing really well on ladder and so on. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you still want to prove everything about yourself so that you're not just the new guy. You're the new guy with a lot of stuff that people can say about you when you when you turn up. And Kid is just really good at this game. He is just very good. 100% agree. I think it'll be a great injection of uh, new blood into the Grandmasters season next year, especially in Asia Pacific, where there was, uh, you know, I think a little bit of a complacency amongst the players. They maybe weren't pushing themselves to the highest level of their ability. Some uh, fierce competition in players like Kin will definitely uh, make sure that they are absolutely practicing to the maximum. Of their yeah, and if they're not, they've got a wake up call coming because somebody like Kin will just destroy them. That's right, 100%. It's what we so saw wake from up uh, or, or Chinese relegated. Taipei. Right, I mean, Chinese, type, uh, Chinese Taipei against Hong Kong in the previous match in this, uh, previous game in this series, Hong Kong just knew the Druid matchup better and they won because of that. It was pretty straight uh, forward, up and down case. Yeah, and Shaxi is no slouch normally. Shaxi, another of those sure. players from, from the tour stop system in particular, but also obviously doing pretty well last year in Grandmasters for the large part, um, but clearly wasn't on that one. So shall we talk more specifically about what's happening in this oh, game? Because things happened? Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, Let's things are actually happening, whether or not you'd believe it. Early on in the game, it feels to me like the Warrior has actually got a pretty fantastic hand for the matchup, and the Druid has a pretty terrible hand for the matchup, in all honesty. There's been no uh, nourish so far, there's been limited amounts of draw as well. Whereas Kin has a pretty beautiful curve here, of Thorasan onto the perfect hand of her car plus shield slam, and then he could go Dr. Boom into her car shield slam straight away if he wanted to, which just locks out Chef Nomi completely. The wind condition <laughs> for Narina has been deleted. That's not fun. We did see Romania versus Turkey, where Turkey actually had the banker. Romania managed to get rid of four Chef Nomi boards. Okay, Turkey were a little bit sloppy. Right. Um, but even so, this isn't going to have four Chef Nomi boards. It's most likely going to have two. And like you're saying, they're already just in trouble with it. That being said, because the warrior doesn't get to put that much pressure onto the druid, it is likely that the druid will still draw itself into a good situation at some point in this game. 
you still have a chance to get things done at some point. Uh, I agree. And there's, uh, you know, I say the win condition will have been deleted from the arena. Obviously, Chef Nomi is the, the flashy poster child for this deck. We're calling it Chef Nomi through. There's a lot of other very powerful win conditions left in the deck, make no mistake. And Kin not going to have any of the silly endgame nonsense, choosing to shut down or try to shut down Elise and Zephyrus now. Yeah. Uh, I think you are almost guaranteed uh, that Zephyrus is not active at the moment, so not shield mm -hmm. slamming your own Hakar, I think, is perfectly reasonable. Uh, because, again, the uh, obvious implied thing I'm saying there is that the Druid wants to deny the death rattle of Hakar, and when Hakar is in play, Zephyrus, obviously, if it's active, will offer you Hex to be able to clear off the death rattle. Yeah, where the expedition was a danger in case they could get silence, but they haven't, True. so all is all has worked. And uh, even but it's not a huge down, danger, yeah. Exactly. If it's silenced and it dies, it can still come back with uh, Nazoth anyway. So I think that's uh, less of a concern. Hmm. Time waits for no one. So if they knew they were going to have something to wrap, I think they'd take wrap here just to start going through their deck. Mm -hmm. But Scenarius is okay. It provides some pressure. All about defending those nomies for now, or, or just killing your opponent if, if nothing happens. <laughs> Kin draws the blood, that obviously. Is an unlikely thing to happen, right? As the next card <laughs> after her car is killed off, but what do you know? Yeah. So, this is obviously the thing that I was kind of going to bring up later on once the bloods were starting to be drawn, but hey, it's happening now anyway. Playing her car that early introduces. Uh, an element of randomness, I'll call it, into the game. Uh, I yep. believe I previously described it as an absolute clown fiesta once there are bloods <laughs> in the deck and start being drawn uh, randomly. Because if Kin just draws blood into blood into blood into blood into blood, he could just lose on the spot through that way. But at the same time, Narina could also just go blood into blood into blood into blood and lose the game that way. Yeah, and Kin does have Feliciana in hand, so if there is an emergency, yeah. Then fair enough. And also, if you're the underdog in a matchup, the more randomness, the better. Absolutely. If you imagine, if you imagine a card that was 50-50 to do 96 damage to one side or the other, you'd take that as the warrior. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So, I don't think you'd take it as a design team, and people would be crying for it to be nerfed. But, I mean, it's a decent illustration of the matchup. <laughs> it explains the point. Hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I don't want to uh, take it here, but I, I like the card design. It, it's just got such a huge downside. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then. I mean, none of these are good, honestly. This is a pretty bad selection of mechs. I guess safeguard, just because you want to, like, extend the game. But... And you've got Nazoth, which helps even more, so... Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, it's oh. actually quite good. What I think with Mortuary Machine that happened, this is this is made up by the way before anyone starts quoting me, is they had a competition with the design team to make a 5 mana 8-8 eight eight that was unplayable. Okay. And Mortuary Machine won the competition. It's still a good card, it's it's interesting, but it's a 5 mana 8-8 eight eight that no one's ever put in the deck. And I like yeah, it, that's it's... kind of, that's good balance in some ways, obviously the... you'd like it to be played the worst of all the five mana eight eights right like uh <laughs> fell, fell reaver was that the first one and uh the hydra this yep. hydra both felt quite a lot of yes i mean you can still mess way. with this silence it or something anyway yeah game's happening yeah yeah sorry i was just gonna say that now with the pressure ramping up for an arena uh in two halves both pressure on the board towards kin and the warrior but also pressure from the deck you can see from his exasperated reaction that blood off the top was disaster town. The absolute nightmare. Yeah. He can't even believe it. It's too painful to think about. From this point on, unless he's able to burn both of them off the top, Zephyrus this is a river crocodile, uh, a blood-fed raptor, and Elise is a stealthless tiger. Stealthless tiger. It's just a vanilla 5-5 five five is the stupid point I'm making. <laughs> it's a good stupid oh. point. I like it. Oh! Yeah, and it's all gone 
corrupted shape here. Not like this. And actually, I mean, look at their hand. Innovate does nothing. Innovate does nothing. Zephyrus does nothing. Chef Nomi <laughs> does nothing. Swipe doesn't do anything. Yeesh. Starfall's a bit tepid. And at least, like you said, it's a stealthless tiger. This hand officially is ripped. What a mess. They haven't even got the good cards they could have, is what I'm saying. And honestly, I can't even see what their best plan is here. Draw Nourish and try and burn three bloods in a turn? I mean, their best plan is to kill their opponent. This is old school sure. answer at this point. Um, yeah. Because obviously, again, the bloods have started to be drawn for Narina, and I think two have been drawn for Narina, whereas only one has been drawn for Kip. But he only has to push a bit of damage, and then the bloods could do the rest. And actually, Especially if there's no answer for this board. Overlooks. Yeah, there actually isn't. As it turns out, because we're just assuming this gets cleared, because it always gets cleared, right? It's Warrior. They don't have an answer. It's nutty. And Narina's sort of looking at his expression this there. He's got a feeling him. that they haven't got the answer. They're reading, so, reading the game state. Yeah. Uh, what do you even do? Like, start with that, sure. Get something to magnetize Ziliax onto. That is not that. Those are all way too expensive. Does Safeguard buy them another turn, though? No, must be the answer. Okay, Weapons Project as well. Or the one yes, but oh, yeah. it's because of the way that the numbers are Oh, working. yeah, yeah. That actually works perfectly. All right, good pick. Buys more time. Which is something they urgently need. But surely they'll get removal. They've only got a few cards left, and it's all removal cards. Or Bloods. Yeah. I think for Narina here, it's a pretty easy case of, <laughs> yes, I do draw cards. Uh, he's still at 37 health. Shit, Nomi. Uh, it, it's a sad Nomi, but it is literally the best it's ever going to get. There is impossible yeah. for them to get down to an empty deck at this point. <laughs> That's kind of a removal spell. Yeah. But it's not enough of a removal spell. It's still just too much damage being taken by Kin. Are they literally just going to die to this pile of rubbish? Yeah, who needs all that intricacy nonsense oh, going on? Yes. We'll just kill them with a man and his burn pudding. Reactor core online. Okay, that's six damage. Good thing you the reactor instead. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pudding Man is gone. Worthy expedition. Silence your deck. Uh, Ancient of War? Just because you can play it this turn, probably. Innovate. You can innovate Kun and just drop your hand and hope uh, upon true. hope. True. Yeah, true. But is that better than just a 7 mana 10 10? Like, it, Maybe it's, not. it's more value. Even though it's less time. I don't know, a 7-7, seven, seven, a 5-5, five, five, and a stupid genie is probably okay. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. The the tempo, just like getting out your threats before they have time to find answers is probably better. And of course they take the one we're not talking about. Why wouldn't they? Wow. One I wasn't even considering. That does allow them to attack in and then heal up their... Um, <coughs> it does. Scenarius again. So, yeah, okay. I'm I'm quite for no one. Oh. And they get a lot of time to do what to here. I think they'd rather draw a card, yeah. Three. Ooh. Navina's happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's gonna well, be so close, every three matters. Playing well is obviously important here. What is also important is uh praying to whatever higher power you may believe in to uh, <laughs> get those corrupted bloods into Kin's hand. It's Cora these days, right? We've moved through several <laughs> different decks, design team members. Now you just pray to Cora. Yeah, Cora is the powers that be. No tomb can hold me! But they've still Man, got to get through 27 points of damage. No they do, but this scenario has done like 
30 damage at this point or something absurd. Yeah. It's definitely a worst case scenario for Hong Kong. Hey. And yeah, you don't take Kun if you're going to draw Kun, obviously. just don't see a world where this gets better. I want to throw everything on the board, but I've wanted to throw everything on the board the last three turns. Yep. I realise if it gets wiped out, you lose the game, but I think if these three minions die, you lose the game anyway. Mm -hmm. So just dump it all out there. Well, I guess they're thinking with the card draw, they can actually just keep the pressure going for that little bit longer. Oh yeah, if they feel they can get it done in two chunks, then good luck to them. They're obviously struggling with the choices, because they don't have the luxury we do be able to see that if you go for it, you win. Yeah, actually, do you know what? I, I think you're right. I think you should throw it out here, because like it's getting to the point where they are just running out of threats, so they need to condense it all together, right? Like If they're met with a brawl, I think they're starting to just lose anyway. Yeah. No, he is having the time of his life out. Oh my goodness. Two bloods, one after the other. <laughs> Damn it, we shouldn't be happy. You know what happens if this goes 2-2? Two, two? Yeah, 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 I know. I, I know there's a war. Narina, Narina's happiness has just broken everything. On my screen, at least. Have you still got screen? Uh, yeah. Okay, everything's frozen for me, so if you take over for a minute. Of course. Uh, right, Trippity Snippity, the old three snip snaps on the board, could be used to uh, clear off 12 damage worth of stuff. Right. Uh, yep. I don't think that's enough, honestly. I mean, it allows you to take out the king, which is the big one, I suppose, in addition to the uh, uh, crystal merchant. Uh, but I think killing uh, leaving the crystal merchant alive is probably that little bit better because it keeps them drawing cards, which. Uh, who knows? Maybe it kills them if you're lucky. Good old crystal merchant. Yeah. Does one to your opponent and three to you. <laughs> I can't believe how much the warrior is struggling here. I know normally I wouldn't be saying that, but given that the druid is completely paralyzed, they've chosen cunningly not to draw their bloods. I think that was very good well, play. That was bit of a disaster there from Kin though, however, to not trade in the one yeah. one because now War doesn't clear the board on the following turn. Yeah. Um, which is a, <laughs> a big difference, uh, to say the least. Assuming that Narina makes the read and kills off the one one with something other than the Kun the Forgotten King. So, we are now looking at uh, 11, 12, 14 damage, I think. Is that count? Um, so, eight. Nine, ten, yes, fourteen, and I think you want to put the oasis. Oh, excuse me, the oasis surge into the one-one just because it has rush, not charge. I think it's down to the point now where every point might matter. How strong of a read do you have that they have the warpath now, though? Like none. If You've got no read at all in the world. Okay, okay. I don't think you know that they're going to draw something to help them. I don't think the read's very good at all. Fair. Especially when Kim doesn't put the one-one into the seven-six. That's our fault for saying how good he is. <laughs> yeah, this is better. Stop them having Plague of Wrath, so only keep one minion injured. And it could actually be the difference between trading in a 1 1 and not trading in a 1 1 could be the difference between winning and losing in this game. Very much so. They'd be able to clear the board otherwise and get up to 60. Oh, sorry. Not quite 60. Yeah, 60 if they wanted to. I well, they wouldn't be able to clear the board. And do that. Right? Yeah, so they can stay on nine anyway. Yeah. Right. Kind of Which means oh, even with a swipe and a swing of the weapon, the that would still have to be a corrupted oh, blood. Off the Harrison's going to the blood museum. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Do they need That's the blood. Like, he's drawn the draws, but there's blood. And that's just swipe. That's going to be game. Blood and brawls coming to an expansion near you. It's a bit of a sad mistake, honestly. Yeah. Throwing away the game with just not trading away a 1-1. Um, 
you know, obviously it came down to more than that, and they were probably losing the game anyway because the amount of bloods in their deck from that point. But uh, that was some Hearthstone. Well, Derek, my friend, my compatriot, my buddy, when I need to talk to somebody for an hour and a half nonstop, I think we what should we prepare ourselves. We'll give Chat a little break to get themselves a coffee because it is the <laughs> Nazoth Warrior Mirror coming up. So go get yourself a beverage of choice and come back to see who wins this Nazoth on Nazoth action. Chinese Taipei on Nazoth Warrior, Hong Kong on Nazoth Warrior. Derek, is there anything you found that might make one side or the other favoured in this? You know what, I left that treat for a real-time reaction for what the uh, the likelihood of each player winning is going to be, which is to say, uh, no, I had not looked at it yet. And it is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and say, probably a very, 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 very favourable matchup for Hong Kong uh, in this Nazoth Warrior Mirror, given that they have in their deck list Archivist Elysiana, Hakar the Soul Flayer, and a youthful Brewmaster for if they needed an extra activation of Elysiana. Uh, Shaxi has none of those things. He has no Elysiana, no Hakar, no Brewmaster, <laughs> and so he will just lose in Fatigue, which means he has to win as a, uh, a tempo deck, a tempo matchup which uh, I think I'm not wrong in saying isn't the best strategy in a Nazoth Warrior Mirror Neal. It does indeed look like Chinese Taipei are dumpstered here. Hitting people with Acolyte Pains <laughs> just doesn't really get it done. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, they can curve through in some worlds, but they don't have enough minions to get through the first draw, which Hong Kong have. And all yep. in all, it's a little bit sad. 
Um, so for those who aren't familiar with the matchup, what normally happens when you've both got Elysiana is you get to fatigue, you play an Elysiana, you get another deck, uh, then you bounce the Elysiana eventually and you get another deck, and then whoever gets the best deck wins, give or take, with some skill thrown in. Um, but in this one, what happens is both teams get to zero cards in their deck, and then one of them doesn't have Elysiana. It is indeed. So what we're looking at in terms of win conditions, I suppose, would be... Um... Hecklebot as probably the best initial shot, as crazy as that sounds, for yep. Shaxi to just rip out the Elysiana from the deck. Secondary being, uh, I suppose, Dr. Boom top of the deck and no, literally no, bottom card for Kin. Even then, uh, I still think I would put Kin at an advantage. No, I mean, I'm going to call it a big advantage because they don't have a Hecklebot name, so they have to find one. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, the other one being, um, of course, uh, Mecha Doom, I suppose, as their other best shot. There, there is also one other shot where they just play all your death battles because they're in the top half of your deck. They get dealt with, you play Nazoth, and somehow they don't get dealt with. That can happen. Right. Notice the stress on the word can there, meaning I don't really believe what I'm saying, but it's possible. It's always possible. They're ahead on board, Derek. They're already 11 behind on health. Uh, and they haven't got... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you want to get technical, they are ahead on board. They're behind on board, Doug. <laughs> well, that was quick, wasn't it? Uh, as for the Emperor Thorasan in Kin's hand, we're probably going to see that saved until there is either a, a Brewmaster or an Elysiana in hand. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case because um, they have the coin in hand, so it could still just be a case of uh Elysiana coin banker on turn 10 or later uh but in case you want to use that coin maybe we'll see Baleful Bank uh sorry maybe we'll see uh Emperor Thorosan held back just for a little bit yeah just looking through actually the Chinese Taipei lineup to see why you would bring this particular form of warrior um and they must have expected warrior to some extent what? because they brought the druid maybe they just fancy taking down rogues yeah that must have been what they, they're expecting. Because this is one of the most one-sided matchups. We talk about one-sided matchups in terms of Druid versus Warrior, but actually this Warrior Sorry, versus points. other Warrior is one of the most one-sided matchups in all of Hearthstone. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'd put it at like 90% to get to win. Yeah. Maybe that's a bit strong. Maybe you're higher than 10% to hit Mechathune or Hecklebot, or they misplay or something, you know, but... I think if I played think perfectly, cool. yeah, yeah, I think perfectly from Hong Kong side, ten percent sounds about right. It's interesting, actually. Um, I think the first person to alert me to this may have been Viper, but certainly a few pros have mentioned it. Mm. When you're doing percentages for matches, what if they're close to fifty-fifty, the pros put them closer to fifty-fifty. Right. But if matches like fifty-six, fifty-seven percent, when played between between two pro players, that gap actually widens to the very top level. Sure, because yeah, that, that makes sense. You can't overcome the odds of the good player playing the best deck the best way, no matter what yeah. you do. That's, that's, yeah, that's interesting, actually. I wonder if there's a breakpoint for that where it becomes more likely to converge or diverge. There will be, largely, I think. But I don't know how to work that out. I probably do know how to work it out, but it's, it's probably really <laughs> hard to play. Yeah, yeah. And it will also depend on why it works, not just the numbers, I suspect. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a bit more complicated than just pure maths. Uh, I think uh, something else that's worth talking about here is that, weirdly enough, despite this being very much a fatigue matchup, both players actually have the liberty to draw as many what cards as they no. want. Because uh, Shaxi is losing in fatigue anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference whether he draws cards or not. And Kin mm -hmm. is winning in fatigue anyway, so it doesn't really matter whether he draws cards or not. Like, Kin <laughs> would have to draw 20 cards over the course of the game to put himself at a disadvantage, which is obviously impossible. That would be very hard. Yeah. He should challenge himself and try and do that. I mean, sorry, draw 20 extra cards, not just the natural Yeah, one. give it a go, man. You can do this. Yeah. I mean... Shield. Elysiana into <laughs> shield block, shield block, shield block. Acolyte of Pain and shield block. The point being... Yeah, even then it wouldn't do it. But the, the point being, even then... Um, 
both players can draw as much as they want. So as soon as Weapons Project is found for Kin, I do fully expect to see Harrison Weapons Project to just keep the draw going. Well, Chinese Taipei do have their stuff that at least makes the game worth watching to some extent. Mm -hmm. Dr. Boom Nazoth gives them as long as possible to try and find the Hecklebot, to try and find the Cthune, the Mechathune, to try and find anything. Just, right. just some chunky, chunky things might be enough. Who knows? Definitely gives them a few extra percent. I mean, the other thing you have to remember is that as soon as a car is played, and dies, Mechathune is not an out anymore, unless Shaxi can overdraw the blood, which is very difficult to do as a warrior because you don't have that much burst card draw. Um, but yeah, I mean, it all just stacks up on top of each other as Shaxi is very unlikely to win this game. <laughs> yeah, literally doesn't want to roll the Blast Shield for the first time ever in a warrior mirror either. Anything else, anything that gives you some value or some attacking points is much more valuable. Like, I mean, he, it's literally the worst. No. I think even one Hecklebot isn't enough, even if it pulls Elysiana. Like, you'd have to go Hecklebot to pull Elysiana and the Nazoth or something stupid like yeah. that. But they can but, get a Hecklebot into some chunky stuff. Um, I don't know, define chunky stuff. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it to your imagination. But there's bound to be something. There's always something. But, that's I mean, Bulldozer, Mechathune, still a 10 10. Uh, Maybe the Tomb Warden, yeah, things of that ilk. Maybe some death battle things, you just get huge in off and they don't have brawl. Right, yeah, We're I mean, really, that's... really trying hard here to make things up, aren't we? That's a good point. Maybe if you're able to find uh, a couple of uh, mechanical whelps, and then you resurrect them off of Nazoth, mm. that's a lot more damage, as opposed to the defense of uh, Cutters. They'd do it. Well, they wouldn't necessarily do it, but they'd give you some hope. Okay, then. Yeah, okay, then. That sums up this entire situation. Because they don't want to play any of these cards. Wow, and their hero powers used. What a great turn to have nothing to do. Yeah, absolutely horrendous, though it is for them. They're not going to win it the longer it goes. And as we can see, that's kind of it. Yep. I suppose the chance of tempoing out a big Nazoth was really their best shot. But what do you know? There's a piece of removal ready for Kin to go to take all the damage off. Power home, our tombs. <laughs> well, go Cartoots. I've heard you're really good in Priest. You're only going to do 52. Yeah, where's some of that? Oh, delivery drone, now they can get something to do? Yep, delivery drone's the only one that matters. If they roll that every other turn for the next 15 turns, they'll probably lose. I mean, I would, I would say if they are able, if they were guaranteed at this point, every other hero power is a delivery drone. I think they'd be like 30% to win. I think that would yeah. skyrocket their percentage of winning. They'd still be quite far behind, but they'd have a really good shot. Like, maybe they can just win on tempo at that point. Maybe it doesn't even have to be uh, Hecklebot. Bulldozer or Snip Snap? Snip Snap, two boards, Bulldozer hits you and hits you hard. Yeah. Snip Snap, you can actually play oh, in a turn. Bulldozer I takes mean, a whole turn. Oh, probably Snip Snap. Oh, really? I was going to say I prefer Snip Snap. Like, Snip Snap can go face, because if you magnetize, that's like pseudo charge, right? Mm hmm. Okay. I, I wouldn't have hated either, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, Snip Snap can do it now. I guess, I guess you only win in a world where you keep rolling delivery drone. Yeah. So you've got to keep playing stuff every turn and hoping to keep rolling delivery drone every other turn. I, yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Because in that world where you roll them too many times, you don't play with cards and they're all too expensive. Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a moot point, but yeah. Oh, armor, though. Oh. They're in front, Derek. They're doing it. 
I want, like, I wonder how much armor Shaxi would actually have to have to survive till the turn timer. Like, it, it has to be all of it. What? Uh, just, just three, all the 300? armor. Three hundred. Uh, that... so that's probably say right. fifteen turns of fatigue. You know, it's probably more like twenty. Yeah. Uh, one fifty is sixteen times by eight. Yeah, three hundred. Right. That's nothing to do with what I just said, which comes to a totally different number, but it sounded <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I mean, even then, even if it was just 200, that's... Even if it was just 100, that's almost impossible to get with Modern Warrior before fatigue sets in. Okay, it is. Then. It really is. Especially as once you've run out of stuff, it's not only the fatigue that sets in, it's just you don't have any... You don't have any more removal, you don't have any more threats. Eventually, Elysiana's minions will just kill you. Yeah, that's if Hakar doesn't, oh, and all those other then. things that are just going on. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on, and none of them are good for Chinese Taipei. Except for the fact they do get a second chance later in the day if they do lose this. This mm -hmm. is the winner's match, so they go down to the lower bracket and have another <laughs> chance to qualify for that top eight. New meta doubt. Dragons. Imagine. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. I like... I, I'm personally a big... Like, I, I know it's been a bit of a contentious point with both uh, the rise of the mechs that brought back... Uh, that buffed a bunch uh -huh. of cards and obviously made Luna's Pocket Galaxy 5 mana and Doom in the Tomb that uh, brought back all the, all the wild cards back into standard. There's always going to be a couple of duds in that. Like, whenever you're doing something that exciting and powerful, they're going to mess something up because it's impossible to predict in terms of power level. And, you know, it happened both times. There was Luna's Pocket Galaxy and then Evolve in the second one, both of which are definitely overtuned. But if the... I don't know, the approach changes ever so slightly, like a slight tweak to the, uh, yeah. uh, the way that it responds to those overpowered cards. I'm a big fan of having you know, events like that, expansions like uh, Descent of Dragons, which at the moment looks absurdly powerful. Like, there have been a couple of tweets saying that uh, they think it could give uh, Kobolds and Catacombs a run for its money of the most overpowered expansion ever. And I think I agree. At the moment, it looks set to take the throne. Yeah, and overpowered stuff, as long as it's all overpowered, is fine. If you can all do yeah. complete nutty things, it's, it's fair fun. for all. Uh, my only small regret about all of it is I would have loved to have maybe a month instead of a week where we lose the wild cards and have the pure meta for these five sets. Interesting. I can, I can see that, yeah. We're going to have this weird five-day meta where we don't get any real big tournaments, at least in the West. Yeah. Um, and we're not going to get to see what the meta could have been. If that had been maybe three or four weeks with one tournament in the middle, sure, yeah. that's like a whole meta we could have explored. But that's only a minor sort of scratch rather than anything really that important to me it's just a shame that that wasn't maybe used more for a tournament point of view big time i mean uh, also like if you imagine back to what the tournament uh sorry the meta would have been if we hadn't had this it would still just be combo priest stone right as like mm -hmm. the far and away that's a, very, one deck. that's a very good point if you want to get the legend between the 5th and 10th of december yeah combo you know priest play. is your deck Right, and what's changed since we've rogue, been actually. waffling on? Um, nothing. Uh, Shaq yes. still hasn't got any good cards. Hong Kong still have everything they need ready to go. Uh, Shaxi's hmm. done 10 damage. I think in this instance as well, I really like that Kin is holding back on her car because like you were saying last game, you know, if you had uh, a card that said 50% win the game, you play it versus Druid, but you absolutely don't play it in this matchup where Kin is so, 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 so likely to win. All he needs to do is stave off this aggression. And when you look at Shaxi's hand and realize it is two brawls, Plague of Wrath, Weapons Project, Shield Slam, <laughs> Dynamatic, that doesn't sound particularly difficult. Go, bots, go. You can do this. Yeah. Just explain to Chips they? and South Bay in chat what's happening. Basically, we're from the future. <laughs> and we um, just put all of the comments to chat in as we went because we knew what they were going to be. Well, actually, uh, that's if not that doesn't quite clear true. everything up. We, we recorded an infinite number of VODs for every possible iteration of chat messages, uh, just in case, um, <laughs> uh, to make it appear as if we were live. 
Uh, so Captain Bardo, Southray, Prasanna, Legion, AAA, and Chips. You know, this is one of an infinite number of videos we recorded uh, for every possible combination of chat chatters. All of which Abar in production has to check every morning to work out which one to use. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> It's a real, uh, it's a real freak of statistics when you think about it. We've gotten pretty lucky so far with the choice we've gone with. Yeah. <laughs> just, just 14 games, 65 possible, <laughs> 605 possible combinations. And how many of those with this chat? Just the one. So eight cards left for Shaxi. How many is that left for Kin? I can't see. Plus thing five. So, you know, technically further ahead in fatigue, but as we've said, it does not matter one whit uh, because Elysiana is there ready to soak things up. It's really just making sure that these one ones don't chip to death uh, for Shaxi, which I think uh, a timely Nazoth should absolutely sort out. Five, four minion for five mana, pretty big. Uh, do you have to draw cards here? Like, what's the best? Because, yeah. okay, my point was going to be you'll never win in fatigue anyway, so. Dying quicker or slower doesn't make much difference. The only thing you have to consider is, am I more likely to win if I oh, if I have more turns alive before fatigue kills me? To which the answer is probably yes. You get more hero powers, right? Right. You have a higher so chance of finding... So you get more cards. Yeah, your cards in your deck are worse than your cards in your discovery drones for this yeah. job. Hmm. Which is an impossible job, but you know. It's also worth bearing in mind that while I praised Kin for not playing the Hakar, as soon as he gets a whiff of Mechathune, he will be slamming that bad boy down. Um, at the moment, I imagine he will have been keeping track and realized there are no discovered mechs in hand for Shaxi. Mm -hmm. uh, so he won't play it quite yet, I'd have to imagine, but I would guess as soon as there is a discovered mech that sits around in hand for a while, you throw it down, remake your deck with Elysiana, you're not dying for bloods, and your opponent can't win. Yeah, it's the only thing we've got to keep track of in this game. Well, yep. I mean, apart from the chip damage, which we're basically ignoring, but we are actually watching it. It's just pointless mentioning it every turn. It, it's there. We've seen it. It might get there in a world where Nazoth wasn't in hand. Yep, there wouldn't. we go. It's deleted. Yeah. And you might as well get rid of the other minion, because why wouldn't you? Because you've got nothing else to do. It's the the least anticlimactic climax ever, the most anticlimactic climax ever, where just nothing <laughs> is occurring in this yep. warrior versus warrior mirror, which we expected to be tighter until we saw the deck lists. I mean, it's, it's less anticlimactic, right? Because that implies you expected something to happen. We kind of knew that nothing was going to yeah, happen I... going into this game. <laughs> They also failed to even make it interesting by politely rolling some delivery this drones. Would be a good time for a yeah, that would have at least. Let's get armor every turn, which just doesn't help anybody get excited. It, I mean, like we said, they'd have to gain such an impossible amount to survive the fatigue that it's not even worth talking about. And yet, here we are. So, here we are talking about it. Yeah. Somewhere out there, Falk's excited. This I'm sure. A good time for a to play. His little excited face. Well, if you can't beat them, get as much armor as you possibly can, just for giggles. If you can't beat them, waste their time. <laughs> yeah, uh, they wasted their time. That was a bit, that was a bit well, like, It's not wasting time yet. If there is a no. sliver of a chance, you take it. Um, and maybe they're seeing something we don't. Who knows? We did see Scenarius hit face six or seven times. Okay, it was backed up by powerful druid spells, not right. brawl. Yeah. But we did see scenarios go face five or six turns in a row. If this Harrison somehow managed to achieve the same feat, then they would nearly win. That belongs sure. in a museum. Nearly. Nearly, That's nearly. That's as winning, right? You get half a point if you nearly win. Uh-huh. But they're going to get a delivery drone now. What's he going to deliver? Garbage cards, because that's what's in the box. Uh, yes, none of those do anything, so Snip Snap is just the best card. Yeah. 
Now, if you could just kill the opposing Harrison without killing yours, and you can, it's not very pretty. <laughs> the temptation to weapons project play was pretty strong there. It might even be right. <laughs> Maybe. To play a 2 3 snip snap only, Weapons Project yeah. hit the Harrison, plague the Harrison. I mean, nothing's uh, right because never winning, but yeah. that would have set up some yeah, sort of yeah. board. How much is that now? Is that three cards left? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, they're, they're rapidly getting to a situation where they don't care at all. Yeah. I can't imagine what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> We're nearly there, Dara. Nearly yeah, there. Something crazy happened. Yeah, that is yep. another board cleared. I'm trying to think if there are any threats left for Shaxi whatsoever. I don't <laughs> think <laughs> there <laughs> are any. Yeah. Oh, it's delivery drones or riot at this point. Draw a card because no reason not to, I guess. Delivery I mean, drone, uh, yeah, come I on, guess... save us, please, boom. Just give us something to Something talk about. that has happened along the way is that the uh, the coin has been used up by Kin. So, like, you know, uh, I, I guess that does mean that Elysiana coin. Brewmaster is not a possibility, but I very much doubt that even matters. Has Brewmaster actually been played at this point? I can't remember. I don't know. But it's not about the winning so. or losing, it's about the cards does, you play yeah. along the way. Though. Oh, so true. Well, actually, no, I take that back. It's actually completely false. It's uh, nice and <laughs> sentimental, but it is about winning Absolute or losing in the nonsense. global games. All right, there we go. The big daddy himself. That'll clear up the board. At the very least, force a brawl or a warpath or some kind of removal from Shaxi, which means he's not pushing any damage, which means he loses. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? Come on, Shaxi, see something outrageous that we've missed the whole game, just to prove us to be idiots once and for all, in case there's any doubt. Nope, I'm okay. sensing a board clear here because it doesn't die. Start off by blowing up your own board is always a good position to be in when you've got no minions left. That's, that's very good. Yep, and now I'll destroy everything so your opponent has a, a rake of stuff and you don't. Now wait for three quarters of an hour for animation. Okay! And now zap them to death! All right, step one. That's the first zap. If he gets zapped every sing every other option, and, and delivery Blast Shield doesn't come up switch. once, uh, then he still doesn't win. This story deserves a new ending. Right, Panda so has been used somewhere up along the way. Doesn't matter though. Okay, this is rubbish. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's entertaining to talk about. Destroy mech. Yeah. Because the opponent's only got mechs left that they're going to uh, discover. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I guess if that's the only way you lose is some kind of nonsense there, then take it. Automaton. Um, yeah. Take a card. Assassin. Axe. That seems good. More damage. Yeah, maybe axe. Whatever. Sylvanas is quite a good Hearthstone card. It's great. We're just picking any old of And Doctor <laughs> Boom for the memes. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> pick that. Triple Doctor Boom is a golden Doctor Boom. You play the doc. You pick the Doctor Boom, you draw it off the top, you play it, and chat explodes in a flurry of Kek Ws. It'll be this glorious. Be a good time for a yeah. plan. And that's how the conversation must be going. Well, Thorosan is a sensible card, but honestly, we can't lose this. Let's just take Doctor <laughs> Boom. And Fung yeah, is like, I mean, oh, Violet Wood is the correct pick. Yeah. Oh, and in fairness, I don't mind card. people taking the right stuff. We did see teams mess up by not taking Absolutely. it seriously enough at times, so yeah. But chat are giving your Kek Ws anyway. 
Thanks, guys. Cool. Appreciate but they're trading the one gun doesn't with this. How will they cope? All right, how can they do 29 damage? Plus seven. Poppy Penguin, casters know more than you could ever imagine. Yep. That's a play that definitely wins the game. As is leaving the keyboard. I mean, Snip Snap can't even trade in here, huh? So that doesn't sound great. I guess Snip Snap has to be used as removal here, but I mean, I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. It, it does not matter. Shaxi has no win condition at this point. But it's our job, Derek. Sure. <laughs> so we both just stopped doing it. Ah! Right. Uh, Warpath could obviously be used here to clear oh, things up, but Shaxi would yeah. rather tank the Damahe and then uh, clear it up on a following turn. I can understand that. It also leaves an activator for Plague O'Rath. Delivery drone. Just one time. Just I mean, what does it even do anymore now? Nothing, but it gives as us soon as Mechathin is found, he plays the Hakar. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just want to talk about a choice between three things. Fair enough. They might be interesting. No! Delivery drone! Or. Concede. You can't concede because maybe I can't think of a good. They have got to play a game, so they want to keep themselves fresh if they do lose this. That's one reason to concede rather than grinding. But I suspect the brain is thoroughly off at this point anyway. It's not like they're they're grinding <laughs> with a huge amount of thought on each turn. The brain is thoroughly off is my new ringtone. Thank you for that, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Or if you call it, like, that's my uh, answering, uh, answer, I mean, I don't have an answer phone message. I don't even know what that is anymore. But, sorry, Derek's brain has uh, thoroughly died. I can't even remember what you said anymore. That's how bad my brain is. senior, apparently. Yeah. Shaxi kills the things. Did you, but when you pick up the phone, yeah. Are you are you old enough to say your own phone number? No, and I never was. Right, because my granddad does that, and I always it's like the weirdest thing. Like, of course I know what the number is. I just called it. You know? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Like, and I've only ever heard. Eight one one three two three two nine. I'm Nobody like, yes, uh, of course. <laughs> if anyone from chat recognises that number, I will give them a, a note. Oh, some poor okay. person's going to... Oh, is that an actual number? 8113-2329, yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Right, Snip Snap on the board. The final vestige of hope for Shaxi. Can Kin find an answer in his hand full of answers? Find out this time. On Sylvanas on. is us. <laughs> yeah. On yes. The TV show called Yes, where the answer is yes. Hmm. Um. Warpath, Warpath, Warpath wins the game. Mm -hmm. Violet Warden probably wins the game. Mm -hmm. Sylvanas probably wins the game. Maybe very difficult for them to choose what to do if all their cards win the game. I feel like this play probably wins the game, so I'm on board with it. Yeah, I, I think it's a good chance. Please get a delivery drone. I don't blame you for not giving up, but I do blame you for not getting the delivery drone. Yeah, so what is this? Delivery drone Mechathoon is their chance, and Kin becomes not a good Hearthstone player magically, and so he doesn't play her car. Oh, well, I mean, Sylvanas actually just locks it out anyway, so, yeah. 
Mechathun can't even win anymore, right? Maybe that yeah, Hong Kong could win with Mechathun themselves, steal it and then win with it. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, that would be perfect. <laughs> Shaxi finds another cunning clear. I mean, he's Yes! He gets it! And he looks forward in his seat. Could he get a Mechathune that will make no difference? You could cut the air with a knife at this point. <laughs> the tension oh, okay, is then. just building. What will it be? It's palpable. Will it be a Hecklebot? Oh, you can feel the thrills. We shall end this disturbance! It's only take like 14 turns to get to the second to the third delivery drone. Alright, Shaxi gets it. to do something. Alright. What's in the box? It's... Nothing! Nothing. Hey. Right. There we go. Finally! The nightmare is over. For Hong Kong and for Chinese Taipei. And it does mean that Kin and Fung are our victors. They are going to be going through to uh, the next stage of the competition because this was the upper bracket match. They are through to our top eight uh, that will be happening on the weekend just before Christmas. Uh, very, very exciting stuff. But it does mean that going down uh, to the uh, decider match is going to be Chinese Taipei where they will be fighting against either taking a look at the rest of the matches because my brain has been fried and I've forgotten what the other teams in the group were. Argentina, uh, Argentina and... and Mexico, which happened yesterday. So that is going to be our next match up today, I believe, Mexico versus Argentina. That should be a very good one. You know, um, Argentina, traditionally the best performing, most well-known and respected Latin American Hearthstone country. Uh, whereas Mexico, you and I have just been pretty consistently impressed in global games. And of course, with the fact that you uh, put em uh, Empanizado in uh, to Grandmasters this year, as he has just qualified. It's an exciting time for them. Uh, but I suppose I'll let you do the talking about that in the actual series. Yeah, feel free to carry on cast another one, Derek. It's fine by me. Um, yeah, just Ooh. a quick mention there. Don't let the last 20 minutes of that Warrior Mirror detract from how well Hong Kong played that Druid Mirror. Uh, they they came oh, yeah. out victors. Nothing to do with that game five. Game five was a bit farcical, but the Druid Mirror, they knew exactly how to do that. Worthy group winners and worthy top eight. And yeah, I think I'll be back with Falcone in just a moment to talk about the Argentina versus Mexico one while Derek goes and tries to find what's remaining of his, his poor mind that we have melted. See you then.